Hi, thank you for joining us for AWS IoT Core device provisioning video. I am Syed Rehan and I'm a senior solution architect with AWS IoT. So in this video, we will look at the new provisioning console experience we have just released. So we will discuss what is provisioning. We will also show you how to provision a single device and we'll also show you how to provision fleet provisioning devices by using just-in-time provisioning or using provisioning by authorized user as well as provisioning by using claim certificate. So what is provisioning? AWS IoT Core now offers a new device provisioning console experience that enables customers a more intuitive way to select the best provisioning option for their IoT solution. You can now more easily navigate the device provisioning scenarios and follow a simple flow to create a provisioning template and configure permissions for a single or many devices. The updated user interface also gives you access to documentation, product information, and resources to assist you in choosing, creating, and managing a device provision flows in the same place. When building an IoT solution, customers must provision their devices with X509 certificate before securely connecting and communicating with AWS IoT. Provisioning refers to the process of registering devices with their digital certificates and permissions to access cloud resources and associating contextual information, such as device serial numbers and location with registered digital identities. For example, for smart home applications such as TV, light bulb and thermostats must be provisioned with the cloud to prove their identities and interact with other cloud connected products such as intelligent voice assistance so in this video we will look at four processes to provision a device one would be for single device provisioning and the rest of the three would be for fleet provisioning of devices either by using just-in-time provisioning or provisioning by authorized user or provisioning with claim certificate So let's switch you over to AWS IoT Core console. So let's first look at provisioning a single device. So let's click on connect more device. So this is a process visit which will guide you through on connecting and registering and provisioning a single device. Let's click next. So this is where you can enter the thing name. So I will enter it as demo single you have additional attributes such as thing type, so you can associate this thing with a group of other associated uh, products. So it could be a thermostat, could be TV, or could be anything which you have in a product line. You also have searchable thing attributes where you can add a serial number. These are attributes which will get passed from the device. You can use this to search further from the IoT core side. You also have thing groups and you also have billing group. And you can associate this thing with a group of other products. So if you have a, a line of products such as TVs, but different models, so you can have associated group of the models where this thing device can get belong to. And finally, in the group section, we can look at billing group. Billing group helps you organize your things to allocate cost. Let's go ahead and click next. So in here, you have an option of platform and SDK. So you can select between Linux, Mac OS, and Windows 10 for your device to basically get configured to. And then you can also use AWS IoT device SDK for Node.js, Python, or Java. So in this case, I'll keep it as Linux and I'll keep it Node.js. And let's click next. Now you can download the connection kit. The connection kit contains the certificate, the private key, and Node.js SDK. And we also contain a startup script, which will help you set up the device and send messages to AWS IoT Core. We will also set up the policy, and then you can let's download this connection kit. We have given you commands over here, which you can use to set up and unzip. And there's also other commands here for you to modify the script to make sure it's executable and run the script. So when you run the script, this is the console window where you will see the messages coming in from the end device. Let's continue. So we can see that the thing has been created, demo single thing, and 
This is how you will basically create a single device connecting to AWS IoT. Let's switch it over to connecting many devices and under fleet provisioning. So fleet provisioning has three provisioning templates. So let's click on that and talk about that. So the first one and is the recommended one, which we basically refer to as JITP and it also known as just-in-time provisioning. It is our recommended flow when you have a chance to configure your unique identities into devices during manufacturing. Then we have provisioning devices by authorized user. If your manufacturing does, process doesn't allow for installing unique certificates on devices, you can use provisioning by authorized user flow. So what it effectively means is you actually have a device where uh, you have provided an app with, to the user. So when the user purchases the product, they will basically connect the device through the app, which will basically connect to AWS IoT, provision the device, and register the device and you know create the connection between the product and product in this case the thing and allow you to uh, set it up as per the configurations um, using the process provided using your mobile app now let's look at provisioning with claim certificate it's basically a certificate which are shared among your other devices many devices <clears throat> and you can read more about this in the blog which is provided in the description of this video. So what it effectively means that devices can use their claim certificate to connect to AWS IoT for first time. And that the claim certificate is replaced with a unique device certificate after provisioning. And this option is also known as fleet provisioning with certificate. This is where the device will connect. You will use your identity checking mechanism uh, you will create the certificate and you will uh, provide the unique certificate to the device, which you subsequently will be used to connect the device to AWS IoT Core. Okay, so let's look at the JITP process, just-in-time provisioning process. So in here, this is the visit which will guide you through the process of creating the provisioning template. So I will basically activate this template and I will name this as JITP. You will also need to choose an IAM role. This allows AWS IoT to access resources on your behalf. So I will use the role which I created earlier. And you also need to provide a CS certificate which will be used to register your devices. So I will use the certificate which I created earlier and I'll activate this as turned on automatic certificate registration, which means that devices certificates signed by these CAs uh, can automatically register when they first use and connect to AWS IoT. Let's go ahead next. We also provide you a thing named prefix, which means that if you provide a prefix, we will use this prefix every time we create a new thing for you in AWS IoT Core. Similarly, like our previous flow, where we looked at providing thing type searchable thing attribute, as well as thing groups and billing groups, they stay the same. So let's go ahead and click next. I will also use a test policy which I created earlier. Now, this is the final screen. This provides you an option to basically look at and see if you want to go back and configure the changes if you need to make any. So let's go ahead and create the template. So now we can see the template has been created. Let's go ahead and look at the template. So the template effectively is a JSON document, which you can alter later on if you like. It allows you to read and see that what actually will happen. So in, in here, if you see here, we can see this certificate ID would be used. We will, this is the policy we will use, and this is the setup we would use. And so you can go ahead and if you like, you can basically delete this uh, po policy if you like. save this as a new version and then this becomes as the most active version and you have the option to be switch between uh, version one or other previous versions so let's keep that as first version as an active now let's go back and look at the two other flows provisioning devices by authorized users 
and as well as claim certificates. So let's first look at provisioning devices by authorized user. So in here, similar to just previous flow, the JITP flow, we can see that we have option to make it active and inactive. And I will give this a name. Really like previous flow, we need to select the provisioning uh, IAM role. So I'll use the one I created earlier. Now you'll see here the difference where we basically have to provide a provisioning policy and a role. And the reason being is every organization have a different setup when it comes to IAM. And you may have a different setup provided by your mobile app or any other processes you're using for user to allow to connect your devices to AWS IoT Core. And this is where we have provided you some guidelines. So if you click here, configure user policy and role, we will open up a documentation for you in a new tab to guide you through what is basically needs to be done and what will happen. So coming back here, we have also given you a sample provisioning policy document. And the reason being is to make sure you need to basically alter the policy and the role based on your guidelines of your organization. So if you have a mobile app which is connecting, what permissions and settings you can basically give it to the user to go ahead and use this. Because being dynamic and dependent on your organization, we basically give you some guidelines, but you will have to do this process. So let's go ahead and create next. Now in here, we basically ask you, and it's a recommended process, to create a Lambda function, which will basically do a pre-provisioning hook. So what it effectively means that if you have a device which you want to basically check and it's a valid device, so you may have in a database uh, valid devices and invalid devices or allowed devices or not allowed devices where you can use a Lambda function and do a pre-provisioning check to make sure this device should be registered or should not be registered and blocked and rejected. So in here, I will use a previously created Lambda function. And just like previous floors, everything stays the same. Let's click next. And I will also use the policy. This is the policy where user devices will basically connect to AWS IoT and what resource they will be able to use. So this is the policy I will use, the one I created earlier. Now it's just like the previous flow, uh, we have option to review our settings and we can go ahead, if you're happy with it, create template. Now the template is created. Now let's look at the final flow, which is provisioning devices with claim certificate. So just like other flows, we have an option to define as an active and inactive, and I will give this a name. And similarly, the description. And I will use the IEM role, which I created earlier. The difference over here, we have to basically define a claim certificate policy. And this is the policy which will allow your uh, do the claim certificate, which is basically being used by the device to connect and provision in the IoT device. And this policy is attached to the claim certificate you choose in the next section. So I will use the test policy, which I created earlier. So let's look at a claim certificate. So the claim certificate needs to be active and must have the claim certificate provisioning policy attached to it. This is the policy which will be used by your device to subsequently create the further registration and creation provisioning of your devices. So you have an option of activating, deactivating, and deleting uh, some claim certificates which you are not using. So I will use the one which I have basically active and created earlier. Let's go next. Now, just like user trusted flow, we also provide a pre-provisioning action. Similarly, you can use this to do pre-registration uh, and provisioning test on the device which is trying to connect to it to your environment on AWS IoT. Um, basically, you can check it on a database side, just like previously, uh, and validate it is a valid device or not. So I will use the pre-provision and hook Lambda, which I created earlier. So if you, if you do like to create this, you can create a Lambda function. It will run a new tab for you and take you to Lambda console. Just like previous flows, we also provide you thing prefix and other additional configurations, such as thing type, search thing attributes, thing group, and billing group, as well as device configuration data. 
So let's click next. And we can select the test policy, which I created earlier. And let's go ahead finally. So this is the final screen, just like other screen, giving you the chance to review your configuration settings. So let's go ahead and create template. So there we have it. In this video, we walked through on creating a single device and how would you provision it. And also by looking at fleet provisioning process by using JITP or just-in-time provisioning, as well as authorized user provisioning, as well as claim certificate. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us on repost.aws under IoT tag. And thank you very much for watching this video. For myself and rest of the AWS IoT team, have a great day.